Bashar al-Assad nears victory in Syria. Yet another alleged chemical weapons attack claims the lives of some 40 people. And while much of the media rushes to condemn Assad, one America's Pearson Sharp explains why he feels the evidence is not adding up. President Bashar al-Assad is up to his old tricks again. Just as world opinion begins turning in his favor, and with President Trump calling for U.S. troops to pull out of Syria, Assad shrewdly carries out a plan to turn the whole world against him yet again. At least, that's a story being churned out by the mainstream media who insist that on the eve of victory, with a string of military successes on his side, President Assad chose to launch a chemical attack and murder 40 innocent civilians outside the Syrian capital on Saturday. Experts agree it's the most unlikely move the president could take, yet many Western leaders are apparently more than willing to believe it. President Trump, for one, is taking a hard line, just as he did back in April of 2017, warning there's going to be a big price to pay for the attack. The president met with his cabinet and says he's weighing his options and will have a decision by the end of Monday. Senior U.S. military advisors also spoke with the president, deciding how best to respond to the attack. I'd like to begin by condemning the heinous attack on innocent Syrians with banned chemical weapons. It was an atrocious attack. It was horrible. Trump's team is gung-ho and ready for action, with Secretary of Defense James Mattis warning that a military response isn't off the table. Speaking at the Pentagon Monday, Mattis says the U.S. is working with allies in Europe and the Middle East to figure out why chemical weapons are still being used in the attacks. The first thing we have to look at <clears throat> is why are chemical weapons still being used at all when Russia was the framework guarantor of removing all the chemical weapons. And so working with our allies and partners uh, from NATO to Qatar and elsewhere, we are going to address this issue. Not everyone is on board, though, with Russia warning that the alleged poison gas attack must be investigated first. A spokesman for President Vladimir Putin says it's both wrong and dangerous to draw any conclusions before even trying to look at the evidence. Our military experts have been there, as well as the Syrian Red Crescent, and they have not found any traces of the use of chlorine or any other chemical substance against civilians. In fact, the foreign minister is even warning the attack was known by both Syria and Russia ahead of time and was part of a clear provocation as part of a strategy to incriminate President Assad. Our servicemen working on the ground in Syrian Arab Republic have warned us more than once that by all indications, a serious provocation was being planned, and the Syrian government spoke about this as well. A provocation aimed at accusing Damascus again in use of a poisonous substance against civilians. That fits with Syria's own statements two weeks ago when it announced that there were alerts that terrorists were planning a chemical weapons attack to, quote, put pressure on the Syrian regime. Lavrov was joined by Eik Selström, the former director of UN weapons inspectors in Syria, who says it's way too early to assess the data on the weapons attack. Selström added that Assad already had the rebels on the run. In fact, they had just pledged to leave the area within 48 hours. Considering that, he says it doesn't make any sense for Assad to suddenly change tactics and begin using chemical weapons, and that it seems very unlikely that Syria is responsible. In fact, many agree it's much more probable that Jaish al-Islam is behind the attack, since the Islamic terror group is known to have chemical weapons and was operating in the area at the time. The group would also know that by carrying out this attack, they would turn the world against Assad and also bring down NATO bombers on the Syrian army, both of which work heavily in their favor. The fact that the chemical is claimed to be chlorine further complicates matters, since chlorine dissipates quickly and doesn't leave any clear traces in the body. Moscow reports that its officers have already visited the hospital in Duma, and after speaking with the staff firsthand, they cannot confirm reports of the assault. But that didn't stop Israel. Without waiting for any evidence or an investigation, Israel launched a retaliatory attack on a Syrian airbase known as T-4, killing at least 14 people. The attack came out of nowhere, and Russia, which is currently carrying out a large-scale air operation in Syria to target terrorists, says it wasn't warned about the strike ahead of time. That's particularly worrying since Russia reportedly has military advisors stationed at that airbase. 
Germany jumped to its own conclusions as well, with Chancellor Angela Merkel rushing to condemn Syria. And the regime's actions are despicable, they're inhumane, and they break basic rules of international humanitarian law. And this must not go unpunished. And also in this use of poison gas, the circumstances indicate the Assad regime was responsible too. It's not clear what circumstances Germany is referring to, since the evidence has yet to be analyzed. But Britain isn't waiting to find out either, with Prime Minister Theresa May announcing that Assad, along with his allies Russia and Iran, should pay the price for this attack. The whole situation recalls events from exactly one year ago, when some 80 people were killed in an alleged chemical attack in Han Shekun. With help from the White Helmets, an organization with clear ties to Islamic terror groups, the media whipped Western governments into a frenzy, condemning Assad for the attack without any evidence. Without waiting for an investigation, and totally ignoring the inspectors on the ground who said their findings weren't adding up, Trump pushed his red button and launched a devastating missile attack on a Syrian airbase. But in the days, weeks, and months that followed, the evidence continued to contradict the media's story about Assad. And today, it's all but certain that the terrorist groups launched the attacks, not President Assad. But that doesn't seem to matter to the media or other Western governments, including Washington, which appeared to have a major case of amnesia and seem ready to strike at Assad once again. And what's even stranger is that doctors in the area are raising concerns that the attack may not have even happened. One doctor in a hospital in Duma says that he's been in the city since the beginning and hasn't seen a single patient with chemical injuries. I've been in Duma since the beginning of the events there. We did not treat any injuries or any patients suffering from injuries from poisoning agents. We did not treat any cases of this kind. With Duma all but captured and prisoners finally being released, along with rebel fighters and their families being bussed out by the thousands, it's not clear what advantage President Assad would gain from suddenly using chemical weapons. Max Abrams, a professor from Northeastern University and an expert on terrorism and political violence, says this attack would be the single stupidest thing that Assad could do. So far, all news of the attack has come from opposition activists and the White Helmets, and Abrams warns these groups shouldn't be trusted. He explains they are clearly pro-opposition and have fought for their own anti-Assad political agenda in the past. He's joined by Amar Wakaf, the director of British think tank Gnosis, who says these claims are being made by people who have strong biases to portray the Syrian government as badly as possible. It's unclear how President Trump will respond, but with the doubt about who is responsible and the overwhelming evidence that Assad didn't carry out last year's attacks, Many are hoping the president won't rush in without an investigation for a second time. And in the meantime, Assad's sure victory from a few days ago now seems very far away. Pearson Sharp, One American News. We can